Welcome to Artistic Adventures. We're into part two of our Elizabeth I doll, and in this one we'll be working on the face up. So here's where we started. This doll has a wig cap that is removable, and so I've already taken off all the hair. And when you take the wig cap off, it looks like that. It has a little hole. So I'm going to actually try to use this wig cap for her wig and glue the fiber to it, and that'll be in the next video coming up. So let's get started working on the face up. Here's our doll and there's the hole, like I said, where the wig will go once we finish that. And I've already put down about three coats of Liquitex Matte Medium and this prepares the face to receive the acrylic paint or watercolor pencils or these pastel chalks that I use. And I'm putting a little bit of that white pastel chalk on her face too to try to to get that white makeup look a little bit more. That makeup, by the way, is called Ceruse, C-E-R-U-S-E, -E, and it's a mixture of white lead and vinegar, which they later found out was poisonous, of course, because of the lead. And some people believe that may have led to Elizabeth's death because it seemed that she died from a sort of a respiratory illness. And um, there was many much speculation that it was because she always had to have this white makeup on. So that's sort of an interesting tidbit about Queen Elizabeth. Um, as she was dying, they said she refused to lie down on a bed. Her her ladies in waiting were just frantic and they would lie, they would put pillows down on the floor and she would just collapse kind of on the floor and lay there. Uh, and uh, a little bit later on in the series, I'll be showing you some photos, uh, or not photos, but pictures that sort of took that image and, and somebody painted a, a picture of that. So that'll be interesting to see a little bit later on. So now I'm putting down color for the eyes. I started with a brown pencil and I'm going back in with some black. And, uh, you know, sometimes when I do these face-ups, the, they just come out fine and then sometimes I have problems. And this one... <laughs> This one, for some reason, that left eye of hers was so wonky. It's like going off. Can you see that? It's kind of going off to the side. And I just kept looking at it, and I was thinking, well, maybe when I put the color down, it'll be okay. And, <laughs> and uh, after I, I put some of the white in for the sclera of the eyes, I looked at it again, and I was like, no, this is not working. So I completely wiped that that left eye off with uh, water and a q-tip and that's the other nice thing about using the matte medium is it protects the skin and you can take these layers off if you put them down and you don't like them so I went off camera and um, after I looked at it and decided you know this just wasn't going to work and went ahead and redrew that eye but uh, the more I looked at it, the more I was like, no, that wasn't going to work. So anyway, here it is after, <laughs> after I redrew it where it doesn't look like she has a wonky eye or lazy eye or some, something. And um, I would say that she had a pretty direct stare. And by all accounts, she had dark brown eyes that sometimes they said almost appeared black. And um, that that came from her father, who was, of course, Henry VIII. Now, I'm making uh, two shades in the eyes. So it's a lighter brown at the bottom and then a much darker brown at the top. And that'll give it some dimension, sort of a, a little bit more like the light shining on it would be because of the hood of the eyelid shading that top part of the eye. And for the eyebrows, I'm going to keep them uh, more of a reddish brown due to her coloring. She was a redhead, of course. And so I'm not going to make those very dark. I'm going to keep those sort of um, with a light brown uh, base and then a uh, darker brown top. Putting a little bit of red in the corner of the eyes for where the tear duct is. And then for the lips, I'm doing some darker colors in, in the crease. Putting a little bit in the nose and uh, down the crease of the cupid's bow. Um, by the way, um, I'll show you this eraser in a little while but whoever one of you guys told me about this little tiny eraser I'll put a link to to it on Amazon so you can see it but this thing is so awesome for doing dolls I've never liked using that big white eraser but this little tiny white eraser is just awesome for 
getting rid of just, you know, like a stray mark here and there. So I'm always like hitting my pencil on her face. So I'm putting now down, down some pastels uh, in the lips and then also going back in with some brown to darken the part of her lips and also a little bit of a darker red. Also trying to leave this almost a coral kind of color, not a really red red because I think it will look better with her red hair. And then I'm going to put a little bit of uh, red on her cheeks because she did use cosmetics on top of the white skin. So um, although her face was a lot whiter than this, um, I do put a little bit more white on at the end. And I'm putting some blue sort of in the color corner of the eyes. There's always usually a little shadow there. And you saw me using that little eraser again. I think I slow down on, in the future and I'll show it to you in a little bit better. And now I'm putting using a Q-tip. There it is. There. See how cool that is? I love this little eraser. So um, look down in the description box, and I'll put a link to Amazon if you're interested in, in getting one of these for yourself. It's really awesome. I'm using a Q-tip to put more of the white acrylic pastel down and uh, lighten her face up just a little bit more. It's looking pretty good. Shading above her eyes with a little bit of a reddish brown color and we're going to give her sort of a somewhat happy look because she had a much happier queenship than Marie did. Marie had a sad look if you remember from our last video and we're going to give Elizabeth a little bit more of a happy look because she was a great queen and she really did a good job. Putting a little bit of lower lashes on. I'm going to put real false lashes on her near the end when I'm not so worried about knocking them off. Uh, for now, I'm just going to pencil in those bottom ones. And now I'm just using some white acrylic paint and a little pointed tool, dipping it into the cap of the white paint. And we're going to put that sparkle in her eye that we like, that makes it look more lifelike. And then after this, I'm going to take her and give her some sprays of a matte varnish to seal all this down. I'll do that off camera, but that's that's how she looks so far. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah. All right. So we're going to take her off camera and use my air, airbrush and I put down several coats of this matte varnish Liquitex. The airbrush really gives it a nice smooth finish, no brush strokes, you know. Now I'm going to use this Liquitex high gloss varnish and a really, really small paintbrush and I've let the matte varnish dry but I want to go over the eyes and the lips with the high gloss varnish to give them a reflective look and make them look glossy so I'm just squirt a little bit that of that out on a small piece of aluminum foil you need just like a drop a very small amount yeah because you want to put it on I put actually put on about three coats I just put one coat on on camera, but I like to put thin coats and let it dry. It does it just looks much better that way. So I'll just put one coat on on camera, and then off of camera I let it dry, and then go back and put a couple more coats on just to build it up a little bit. So there's uh, Elizabeth so far. She's looking very regal, and she does look happy. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. On our next video, we're going to use that wig cap, and hopefully that's going to work for me to glue the alpaca fiber to. I hope it will. And we're also going to dye the alpaca fiber a little bit more copper-colored red. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure and subscribe because we do lots of fun things on Artistic Adventures, lots of adventures, and you don't want to miss a thing. So be sure and subscribe. Thanks. And bye.